predictability. The milkman, the paper boy, evening TV. Did I get delivered here? Somebody tell me, please. So world Good morning, Trevic Titans. We have your last host of the month. Christina and Leia, all basketball students. Your next game is on the 28th on Monday, away at Sierra Vista. Good luck. You also have a home game on the 30th versus Las Palmas. Good luck. <laughs> <laughs> Don't forget, teachers, to fill out your guys' attendance form so that your whole class can get donuts. Well, that's, that's it, it for, for this, this week's, week's news. news. You'll see your new anchors next week. Thanks for watching. Bye. The government shut down. The government shut down. The government shut down. <laughs> The recent government shutdown has rattled our economy into a downward spiral. But you might wonder, what exactly is a government shutdown? In the United States, when the two parts of Congress, the House of Representatives and the Senate, and the President cannot come to an agreement on the topic of the annual federal budget, funding for non-essential parts of the government cease. In this case, Democratic parts of the government cannot agree with the Republican parts of the government on Trump's demand for a $5 billion border wall between the United States and Mexico. This government shutdown is taking a big effect on our economy. For example, 380,000 government employees are not working. 480,000 essential government employees are forced to work without pay. Also, essential government departments and agencies are still open. However, the workers just aren't getting paid. Those protecting the law and order, emergency services, and national security are working without pay. Also, a lot of people that you wouldn't expect to be affected in our community are, such as airport workers, little organizations that people rely on for food or shelter, etc. A lot of university students aren't allowed to go back because the IRS aren't allowed to do their taxes. So you may wonder, how did this all start? Well, see for yourself. Uh, the president informed us that he will not sign the bill that came over from the Senate last evening uh, because of his legitimate concerns for border security. On December 6th, Congress passes a short-term funding bill to delay the shutdown until after the date of President George H.W. Bush's funeral. On the 11th of December, Trump demanded $5 billion in border funding when meeting with Democratic leaders Nancy Pelosi and Chuck Schumer. He then says that he would be proud to shut down the government. On the 19th of December, the Senate passed another short-term funding bill that did not include border wall funding but would keep the government open until the 8th of February. Trump supported the bill at the time, says the Senate GOP leaders. On the 20th of December, Trump changes his mind about the previous day's continuing resolution the Senate passed. He then announces that he will not sign a bill with no wall funding. House Republicans then pass a new CR that includes $5.7 billion in wall funds. On January 3rd, Democrats take over control of the House and Nancy Pelosi is then elected speaker. Later in the night, the new Democratic majority then continues to pass two bills which would both fund the government that do not include funding for the border wall. 
Also, Republican Senate leaders reject the idea of taking up the bills. After many more attempts at negotiations, arguments, slam tables, addresses from the White House, meetings, and speeches later, the government shutdown still doesn't seem like the end is near. On the 12th of January, the shutdown set the record for the longest of the modern era. 